Alrighty guys, thank you for joining me. This is your host, Daddy Jester. We're going to be looking at our new matchup hockey, card and dice hockey game. And looking forward to showing this off for you guys out there, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that saw my previous video on the fact that we're creating a uh, hockey game. And you want to find out more about it. You want to see what it's like. Uh, you want to get some information about it. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing in this video. Hopefully we'll get some gameplay in and as well. That's kind of shadowy, but yeah, I can't do much about that. All right. Anyways. So, uh, all right. Let's talk about creating a hockey game. This game has been, you know, in the works for a while. Why has it been so long? Why has it gone through so many changes? I mean, there's lots of reasons, right? Number one is when you're trying to simulate any kind of game, whether it's hockey, baseball, football, basketball, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to balance the fact of uh, uh, speed versus complexity versus um, uh, ease of play. You know, because obviously, you know, if we could have a, I could have a hockey game that, okay, I rolled the dice, Pittsburgh won three to two, or three to one, sorry, three to one. I mean, that's not very complex, but it gets you done, and you move on. Your, your game is over. Again, not very complex, but, you know, that is, it could be an actual hockey game, right? So how do you add in complexity but still make it playable, especially when you're dealing with hockey, which is a fast-paced uh, lots of activities going on, lots of different uh, results, lots of different shooting, uh, you know, all kinds of things. So when you look at games like, say, Stratomatic Hockey or Appa Hockey, where they have actual individual player cards, you know, they have a lot of detail built into the cards, a lot of information on the cards, and that's great. The only problem is, you know, you have those cards, which means you need to change lines, you need to move player you know cards in and out which take up time and you know you're you're spending lots of extra minutes of time of the game actually just doing something as easy as changing lines or moving them out i mean there's ways that you can make it a little bit quicker and easier you could have a big area you could put all the player cards out on the table um but again you know ease of play versus complexity with hockey. It's been a really, really tough issue. You know, there's uh, there's several different hockey games that Dave Gardner's been playing on his channel. Some of them are easy play games where you're just rolling a few dice and getting some results. Uh, minutes can go by with nothing happening and, you know, and then all of a sudden you get a, a penalty or a shot opportunity and, uh, you know, the game plays pretty fast and... Uh, but, of course, you don't have the complexity. You don't get the actual, you know, for me, you don't get the actual feel of hockey, what's going on, what's happening, what's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, so what I decided to do when I created the game is create it so that it's going to be easiest for the player to be able to uh, manage the game and make it as quick as possible for the person not make it a you know a massive chart lookup you know with pages and hundreds of pages of you know huge charts or to make it like you have to change lines and the only way to not have to change lines is to not create player cards so what i've done is i've basically put all the information on one sheet of paper for a team so you can see this is the 2017 2018 philadelphia flyers and this is the 2017 2018 Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, so, the way I've got it set up is you've got your uh, first line, left wing, center, right wing, second line, third line, fourth line. You've got some spare players down here at the bottom in case, you know, one of the players can't, isn't injured or can't make it or whatever. Uh, you know, they're, you know, the, like, Patrick Hornquist here has only, only played 70 games. That means he's going to miss 12 games. So you're going to have somebody available. So it looks like Zach Austin Reese could step in and play for him in that game because he played 16 games. So uh, there's a couple other spare players over here. And then, of course, you got your left defenseman and your right defenseman 
first pair, second pair, third pair, and of course you got a couple of spare um, defensemen as well. So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. So you got about twenty-seven players on a sheet. I could maybe try to squeeze these together and put a few more sheets of players on here, but you can see here Derek Broussard only played fourteen games. He's an extra player, and Daniel Strong only played eight games. So you're talking about players that only played very, very few games, and is it worth the extra investment of putting, you know, squeezing all the other information together to get some players that maybe only played one or two games? I, I didn't think it was worth it, to be honest. Um, you're getting enough players to actually play. You're getting some extra spare players that can fill in, uh, and you get a couple goalies as well. So anyways, so if we look at a player card player information here so uh it's broken down in the player's name and then their different shot ratings and their penalty ratings and then their actual stats and uh so all basically all the important information is built in instead of into a card it's just put onto this little excel or you know it's not built in excel and then put on a on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper now the way it's designed is actually to be able to be fit into like a uh, clear plastic sheet like this right and then you can take your uh, you know if you have a erasable pen or whatever and you can mark this up however you want let's say you want to have Connor Sheary move up to the second line you could just put arrows between these two uh, if Patrick, Patrick Hornquist isn't in the game. You can maybe circle the player that is in the game. You can write down who's penalty killing. You can move players around. So you can basically create your lines however you want. Although, like I said, there it is set up to be first line, second line, third line, fourth line, extras and extras. Obviously, your extras will play eventually in, in certain game situations if you're doing like a full replay. Um... So it is designed to fit into like one of these sheets. So like I said, you can just, you know, um, Greg, Greg McGreg, McCraig is going to be in for Simon Dominic. You can just, you know, draw arrows back and forth. You know, um, maybe I want Riley Sheehan to be over here on the left wing and the third line. And I want to move Hornquist over to the center. You know, you can make all your mix and matching and everything. Ahead of time, before you start the game, you can say, you know, who's going to be on the power play, you know, you know, put uh, like PP1, PP2. You'll fill all that information out ahead of time and you're ready to go. You don't have to do that during the game. Although, you know, you can do it, you know, on the fly, however you want. Eventually, we'll have a sheet that you roll before the game and it might say, you know, second line center out this game or something. Uh, or it'll say a player that only played 70 games is out. So you're going to find somebody that played, like here's uh, Tom Kuhnichel. He only played 69 games, so maybe he's missing in that game. So you're going to have to find a replacement. So you do all that stuff ahead of time on your sheet of paper. Now, I'm not going to use this, all right? I'm not going to use this at all for ease of play for number one. And number two is it's going to be super hard for you, you know, to see it when it's all shiny and glary and everything. So, uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's look at what we're doing here. So you're gonna have a home team and you're gonna have a visiting team. Oh yeah, well, let's talk about our chart. So our main, our main action chart, this is gonna give us our, what happens, what's gonna happen in our play results and all that. So you got one chart, right? We might go to a second page of charts, depending on if we need them or not. Right now, I'm tr we're trying to put everything on, keep it on one chart. And we'll talk about this in a little bit when we talk about how the game plays. All right. And so each team is going to be, uh, we'll probably colorize these. Um, Turbo Charge Sports has been creating some nice uh, color variations of these. So I might show you guys next time with the nice colored version, which looks super cool. Right now, I'm just trying to keep things, again, it's uh, it's going to be, you know, right now it's it's alpha stage, so we don't want to worry too much about colorizing and making everything look great um, when there's still a lot of other things we want to do and get things ready to go. But I do like his color sheets. 
color um, scenes. So eventually we'll hopefully switch over to doing some color scenes for you guys so you can see what those look like, um, which I think are super, super good. And speaking of turbocharged sports, uh, he is in the chat. So thanks for joining us. So, yep, uh, turbocharged sports, Dave Garner did a lot of work with this. Uh, so if you guys see them, make sure you give them a big thanks uh, next time you see them and let them know uh, you appreciate that if you like what you see because without their input and advice and thoughts and questions and and uh, you know them pushing me forward and making me think about things and designing things uh, to make it better uh, you know it wouldn't be where it's at today so big shout out to them and thank them because uh, they even though they're beta testers they did uh, they did all the heavy lifting, so to say. I uh, let them do all the the manual labor and dried things out, then report back to me, and then I make changes and, and updates and how I, I think best helps if I hear of situations that come up. So, anyways, uh, so you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have two teams. You're gonna have your one sheet, and we're trying to keep, or I'm trying to keep. The play, uh, the play area small and condensed and easy. So we talked about ease of play. We talked about, you know, complexity of the game. We talked about length of the game, how to best incorporate all that. So this game is designed to be ease of play, number one. And number two is playability of the game for, um, you know, how long it takes you to actually play the game so what we're trying to what i'm trying to accomplish is an easy game that's n not too complex so we get some you know the flow of the game is easy to understand and yet um you can get it done in an hour but still get you lots of uh, uh the feeling of what happens in an actual hockey game so Labor of love, my friend. This is a really good game. Thank you, Turbo. Appreciate all I do. I do appreciate all your work and your effort and your your thoughts, your comments. And we've gone back and forth on a few things. And you know, uh, I was going to remove face-offs completely on the game because they would interrupt the flow of the game. They they create an extra dice roll, with extra time, but. Uh, Turbo kept pressing me on it, so I had to keep thinking of a way to get him in the game just for him. So uh, I think we're going to be able to do that, and we're going to keep the flow of the game down. We're going to keep the dice rolls down, and we're going to keep things moving forward. So that's super cool. Um, let me uh, refresh my page over here. For some reason, it is. For some reason, it keeps going out to like zero people, which I mean, <laughs> which I mean thinks there's nobody here and I'm talking to myself, but then all of a sudden I'll see a chat pop up. So I don't know what's going on with my, uh, uh, what time is the face off, by the way? Uh, it's going to be, I have no idea whenever I get done talking about the intro here. I don't know. Um, but I appreciate everyone coming out to check this out. So we're, we're about ready to get started. But before we get started, we have to talk about the game flow, how the game's designed, what's what's important, what's not important, what you're going to be doing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to have a home team, you're going to have a visiting team, all right? You're going to get a home team, you have a visiting team, and you're going to get these sheets out. Like I said, you can put them in your plastic sleeves, get everything ready to go ahead of time. You're going to be rolling on charts to see if there's anybody that's not in the game, that's injured. You know, if you're keeping track of that throughout the season or whatever, or if you're just playing a playoff series, whatever the situation is, then you're going to have your two teams. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to have a bunch of six-sided dice, and you're going to have a bunch of, whoop, 20-sided dice. Hopefully, I won't drop these on the ground, right? And you will notice that my 20-siders and my six-siders match, and there's a reason for that. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to assign a colored dice. You're going to assign the colored dice. Hey, Dave Garner's here. You're going to assign the colored dice. The game is way too long already. You said the game plays quick. <laughs> I never said it played quick. I said we're trying to keep the gameplay manageable. So uh, that's all I said. We're trying to keep it 
manageable. So you're gonna assign a uh, you're gonna assign a colored dice to the home team, right? So in this case, it's the Flyers, 1970, uh, 2017-2018 Flyers. So he's gonna be this dice. So this dice will always be for the Flyers. Anytime I roll this dice, and the result, it's gonna come up. It's gonna be for the Flyers. All right. Then you're gonna get a white dice. And that's your neutral dice or in different colored dice. It doesn't have to be white, but for me, a white works best, and you're gonna assign it to the visitor team. So anytime when the white dice comes up, it's gonna be for the visiting team. Then you're gonna need a different colored dice, and this is gonna be your modifier dice, which is gonna give you the player position on the ice that the result happens to. So if we looked at our sheet again, you can see that left wing over here is listed as one, center is two, right wing is three, left defenseman is four, left right defenseman is five, and if you roll a six, then it's normally your choice who gets the result. So in this case, if we rolled a one, it would be the left wing, right? If we rolled a three, it would be the right wing, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's your modifier dice is basically going to tell you who or who's going to get the result of the play. So you got the team dice, you got your modifier dice, which tells you the position, and then you got the same thing going on with the 20-sided dice. So I've got a 20-sided dice. This goes to the flyers. Right? I've got a white dice, which happens to match Pittsburgh, right? So anytime I roll these dice, you can see they all match up. Everything's cool. And then of course we have a modifier dice. Right? So everything's matched up really cool. They're really easy for you to so you don't have to think about things. You just go out and start rolling and start thinking about things. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the team dice away. Anytime there's a shot on goal or there's a uh, goalie, uh, you know, a shot on a goalie, we're going to be using these dice. Otherwise, we're just going to use a regular modifier dice. All right. So, what's the, what's, what's, how does this things happen in this game? The basic premise behind it, what are we going to do? So, it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a 20 second time frame. A 20 second time frame of time. So, it, you know, we start off at 20, 20 minutes on the clock. We're going to move down to 1940. So, at 20 seconds of time, what happened, right? Was there any shots? Was there any penalties? What happened? And what, this, what these dice represent is what happened during that time frame. We're going to roll these dice and we're going to compare them to see how well each team played during that 20 seconds of time. So if I was just to roll these dice, you can see, obviously one is the lowest, six is the highest, as it's a six-sided dice. Pittsburgh played really, really well, right? They got a six. Philadelphia played well, but they only got a three. So when you combine or subtract these two, you can see that Pittsburgh was three better than Philadelphia. Three better than Philadelphia. So what you're going to do is you're going to simply take the difference and you're going to look at your action chart. So you got a tied result. You got a plus one, a plus two, a plus three, a plus four, and a plus five column. Obviously, the higher you go on the chart, the better the result or the better chance of you getting a better result on the dice. So if you win by one and you win by two, Two is a little bit better than one, and three is better than two, and four is better than three, and five is better than four. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the modifier dice, and you're going to get the column to get the play result of what happened based upon the, the 2d6. And then if it's a shot on goal, you're going to look at the modifier dice to see who's going to end up taking the shot on goal. If it's a penalty or whatever, then you're going to look at the modifier dice. So you're going to simply just take all the dice, one 20-sided dice, your modifier dice, and your two team dice. You're going to shake them up, and you're going to roll them. In this case, Pittsburgh won by one, and we look at 18, 18, and it's going to be a shot B. Now, how do we know who's going to take the shot? Well, we look at the modifier dice. That's the left defenseman, so we'll just say line one is out. So shot B is going to be Chris Letang, and he's going to take a shot. 
All right, so I'm just giving you kind of example of what how the basic gameplay goes. We're not actually we're not simulating a game yet because there's a little bit more to talk about. So if we had another play, right? You just look. Pittsburgh won by two, two and a fourteen. So get two and a fourteen, and that's going to be a shot C. Who's the shot go to? It goes to left wing. So look at Jake Gensel, and he's going to take a shot. We'll talk about how to take a shot and stuff here in a second, but. That's, that's the basic premise. You're going to roll the dice. You're going to find out what's the difference between your two teams. And you're going to look on that column under whatever your 20-sider says. And if it's a shot and goal or a penalty or something like that, you're going to look at your modifier dice. So you're going to simply just look, roll the dice, 5-1 to one in favor of Philadelphia. So it's a plus 4. So you look on the 4 column under 13, and you get a shot C. Who takes the shot? It's six, which means we can choose anybody on our team that's out there on the ice to take the shot. All right. If we look at another example here, Philadelphia by two and a six. Two and a six is no action. So there's a shot on goal, just that 20 seconds come off the clock. There's not much to work. You know, no penalties, no shot on goals, no, nothing important. Just, just you know, regular, regular, uh, regular gameplay. Um, all right, so if we end up with a shot on goal, each player is rated with an A, a B, and a C shot. So Cs are kind of your, your worst kind of shots, back at the point, farther away shots, bad angle shots. They're not very high quality shots, okay? So, you know, probably, you know, pretty likely it's not going to score, but they still took a shot anyways. Then you got your B shots. Bs are slightly better. It's, you know, maybe in the slot, uh, you know, maybe a better angle. Maybe there's players in front of the goalie that deflecting them or uh, screening them. And then A is like your close in shots, you know, 10 to 15 feet away, coming right in on the goalie, got an opening, you know, stuff like that. So you got A, B, and C. Players are also rated for breakaway shots. Rebound shots, penalty shots, and shootouts. So A, B, C are your normal play results. You might get a breakaway or rebound shot. You might get a penalty shot and a um, shootout if it goes into overtime and, and the game's tied and no one scores and goes into a shootout. Then each player is rated as, with a shootout as well. So that's pretty much easy. Um... So that's that's pretty much what you got to do. Uh, you're just we're going through now. Some people are going to say 20 seconds every time I roll the dice. It's going to be 20 seconds off the clock. That is a lot. That is 60 60 plays per period. You can see there's a huge right. There's a huge amount of cards that we have to go through just to get a through one period. 60 cards, right? So, because of that fact, you got to take into consideration this isn't going to be super, super in-depth um, system where you're going to look up lots of results, you got to check different players, and blah, blah, blah. What you have to do to be able to play this in a manageable amount of time is I have to design it so that it's each, you can get three plays done in a minute. If you get three plays done in a minute, that's 20 minutes per period. Three periods is an hour. And I think that's plenty of time if I can do that. So you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to be able to get three plays done in a minute. And if I'm gonna look up results and I gotta flip up charts and all that stuff, it takes extra time, all right? Now I don't expect everyone to be 20 minutes right off the bat, but what I would like to do is get it to the point where it's easy and people are getting better and easier flow of what's happening and we're ready to move on. So the basic premise is look, you can just quickly plus two and a nine. So two and a nine is a possible penalty, um, blah, blah, blah. So we would look at a penalty check and next roll would be Plus three for Pittsburgh, three and an 18 is going to be a shot A to the left, right defenseman. Shot A is a three, and then we take the shot. 
we would roll that and we would move on. And then it's a plus two, and a two and 11 is a play stoppage. So we did lose three plays in less than a minute. We didn't do any shots and goal yet, but I think it's quite doable to do three plays a minute. That's 20 seconds per, per play. I think that's quite doable. Um, I think the reason for that is there's gonna be several times where you're gonna roll the dice and you're gonna get the result and it's gonna be no action. So you don't need to make a second result. You, need, you don't need to look at anything. All you need to do is just roll the dice again. These plays are gonna take literally five to 10 seconds to do, right? Oh, it's a tie and a 15 tie and a 15 means hard play goes up one, boom. See, just like that, I'm ready. I'm moving on to the next play. So, um, I want to keep it moving and moving forward. So, um, all right, so let's talk about shots and goal. How does that happen? All right, so uh, if we end up rolling these results, right, and we get a shot and goal, right, what you're going to do is you're going to move those dice apart and you're going to pick up these three dice, right? You're going to roll three 20 sided dice, all right? We got the white dice represents Pittsburgh. We got the red dice which represents Philadelphia. And we got our modifier dice. All right. If Philadelphia is taking the shot, we'll just give an example. Philadelphia is taking the shot. This dice is going to tell me whether the shooter gets it on goal or not. The white dice tells us whether the goalie makes a save or not. And then the black dice will give us a result on the chart. If it's not a save, it'll tell us what happens to the puck and a miss shot, if it goes wide or if the goalie saves it or whatever. So if you roll these dice, right? You roll your matchup, you roll the matchup. Oh, it's a plus five and 11. Plus five and 11 says shot C to the right wing. So Phil Kessel gets a shot C. You're just going to take the six siders, move them aside. You're going to pick up your 20 siders. And now Phil Kessel has a shot. So this will be for the shooter because it's Pittsburgh's dice. This will be for the goalie because this is the goal of Philadelphia's dice. And this will be for the result. So Phil Kessel on a shot C is a four. So on a four, which means he's got to roll a one, two, three, or four on this dice to make the goalie have to make the save. All right, so one, two, three, or four on this dice to make the goalie have to make the save. This dice tells us whether or not the goalie makes a save. In this case, Brian Elliott is a one to 14. So on a one to 14, he will make the save. All right, and then we would count this as a shot on goal. And even if this dice misses, if this is within the goalie range, you count it as a shot on goal. So it's a 1 to 14, he's going to make the save. So we'll say Phil Kessel has a shot C and see what happens, right? So we look at the we look at the um, the goalie. The goalie is a 1 to 14. He's going to make the save. So we, we know he's going to make the save whether the shot was on goal or not. Now we can see from him, was it on goal or not? It was on goal. It, and the goalie made the save. So we look at the modifier dice under goalie save and it says off arm into boards. So it just went off the goalie's arm into the boards. And so that shot was not a goal. We move those dice aside and we just pick this up. So you shouldn't be able to roll these dice. And if it's a shot on goal, you just simply put these aside. You roll your 320 siders and you're gonna look and see Again, this is for Pittsburgh, so this might be the shooter or it might be the goalie. This is for Philadelphia, and this might be the shooter or this might be the goalie. So, and then of course, this is only gonna come into play if it's a missed shot or it's a goalie save. Are there decisions to be made throughout the game? Uh, well, sure there's decisions to be made. Who are you gonna put on the ice? Which line are you gonna put on the ice? You can also uh, decide on your aggressiveness, your force for checking strategy, which we're not going to talk about in this video. This is just an intro video. So, uh, so this is just going to be kind of a broad overview of how things are done. All right. We're not going to get into nitty gritty too much. 
All right, so uh, we will talk about the momentum system because I am going to be using momentum system. Um, so we have a token. This represents momentum. When a team has momentum, they get a plus one to their dice rolls, right? So if Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh is, has momentum when we roll the matchup, all right, it's going to be seven to four. So that's plus three instead of a normally it would be a plus two, right? If if uh, Philadelphia had the momentum, it would be a six to five. So it'd be a plus one instead of a plus two. So momentum will adjust how um, the difference in the dice and give you a opportunity um, for your um, for your differences. So obviously the team with momentum has a better chance to get a better result because they're going to get a plus one. And even if they lose, it's not going to be by as much. And if they win, it will be by an extra amount. And you earn momentum by doing several things. There's momentum on our chart, which will give you momentum. Uh, and you will keep the momentum until the end of the period. You take a penalty the opponent scores, or the, your opponent earns momentum as well. So if if, uh, if Pittsburgh has the momentum and Philadelphia earns it, momentum, they don't get the chip. All it does is take the chip away from the other team, and bait, both teams go back to neutral at that point. Uh, so... Uh, Let's see, what else? Uh, what else do I need to cover here? Bum, 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 bum. I think that's uh, that's a pretty good intro. Kind of like I said, this is going to be just basic uh, overview, example, show, showing you how things work, how things play. And then uh, we'll go through a couple examples here. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start the game. I'll go through a few plays pretty slowly, and then we'll try to just pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, you can see here I've got little little sheets here that um, represent it's zero zero. It's in the first period, and there's 20 minutes on the clock, right? So, uh, so with momentum, because hockey is a big um, you know momentum kind of sport, the home team actually starts with the momentum chip. So Philadelphia is at home, Pittsburgh's on the road, Pittsburgh is in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia earns the momentum chip because they're at home. You know that ex that old expression, you know, um, in hockey where uh, the visiting team always has to uh, has to withstand the ten minute onslaught when the game starts. That kind of simulated with the uh, the momentum chip going to the home team because you know the home team's ramped up, the crowd's going crazy, and everything. And usually they get off to a really fast start, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean they'll keep this, you know, the first play, they could lose momentum. Who knows? All right, so uh, we're ready to go. Um, right now, right now on these two machines, we don't have the face-off ratings. And that's kind of more an advanced thing I probably didn't want to talk about anyways. We'll get to that maybe next time. But there will be a face-off rating for players, which will adjust... The 20-sided dice result uh, whenever there's a face-off. So we'll we'll show you guys that next time when we. I want to work on getting some of these sheets done this weekend, getting them updated with the face-off rating, uh, rating, colorizing them. Um, what company makes this game? I make this game. Uh, uh, Great intro. Now let's have a line brawl. Wow, man, that sounds like turbo charge right there. There is a, uh, by the way, there is a line brawl right there on the chart. I don't know if you can read that or not, but there is a line brawl. Where all, all men get a five-minute major for fighting. So turbo made sure that I had that in the game because he was not going to be happy if there wasn't a line brawl. Yeah. All right, so we're starting the game. And again, I'm going to go slow in the beginning just to kind of show you. What happens? All right, so Philadelphia, again, joint home, Pittsburgh. So with the momentum chip, Philadelphia gets a plus one. All right, so here we go. So Philadelphia wins five to one because they got the momentum chip.
So it's plus one, five to one. So they won by four. So we look at the two, four and a two is no action. So there's 20 seconds off the clock and we move on. That's, that's, I mean, that play only took like literally five seconds. We're ready to move on. They keep the momentum chip until a certain event happens. All right. So, wow. Pittsburgh wins by four. Remember, because of this plus one. So it's six to two. So they win by four. A four and a 16. Four and a 16 is going to be a shot B. We're just going to assume for ease of play. Again, you don't have to do, you're going to be setting up your lines ahead of time. It's designed to be line one, two, three, four. Your extra players, but you can mix and match. You can use your little plastic sheet. We talked about that in the beginning. If you're just joining us, uh, you slide your sheet in there. You can make any kind of line adjustments you want. So you just have to get it all ready ahead of time. It's a, yeah, it's in the nice clear sheet, so you can just mark it up however you want. Uh, and I drop something on the ground. All right, so um, Pittsburgh wins by. Six to two, it wins by four, four and a 16 is a B. Who, does the, who takes the shot? All you have to do is look at this dice. It tells us, left wings are one, centers are two, right wings are three, left wings are four, defensemen are five, six is gonna be your choice. So it's gonna be the left wing. So Jake Getzel gets a shot B. All right, so uh, if we slide this up so you guys can see. Uh, Jake Getzel. Seven on A, five on B, and three on C. Breakaway rebound is seven, uh, penalty shots eight, and uh, shootouts are seven. And there's his uh, ratings for the time. And so we're ready to give him a go. All right, so we got a shot on goal B. So what we're going to do is pick these up. So the white dice is for Pittsburgh. It's going to represent the shooter. The red dice is for Philadelphia. It represents the goalie. So this is going to be the same dice. And then this is only going to come into play if it's not a goal and we'll get the modifier. So let's see what happens on the shot by Jake Getzel. All right. So the shot. It's a shot B. All right. So Brian Elliott on a shot B is a 1 to 12. He rolled a 14. So he did not make the save. All right, he did not make the save. He's only a 1 to 12, so he did not make the save. So we have to see if Jake Gensel got it on goal. He's a 1 to 5. This is a 9. So he missed the shot. So there's a difference between a goalie making a save or a missed shot. So we're going to look at the missed shot column, 14, and it just tells us what happened. And it's a weak shot that flutters wide. Okay, so weak shot, no result. And we move on. So that's another 20 seconds off the clock, and we move on. Wow, Pittsburgh. Look at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh wins by 6 to 2 again because of the momentum chip. 6 to 2. That is a plus 4 and a 5. Plus 4 and a 5 says possible penalty. And. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. That's uh, if they were on the power play, they get a shot on goal C. Otherwise, there's no action. So there's no action. 20 seconds off the clock. We move on. So basically, the 20 signer, if you roll really, really low, one, two, three, fours, you're probably not going to get anything going. And obviously, if you roll 16, 17, 18, 19, they're usually going to be really high, good results on the chart. All right. So we're at the 19 minute mark, you can see here by looking at their thing, if you were, you know, depending on how you want to do your line changes, some players might want to do it on every, you know, every time a new minute comes up, they make a line change. So we're going to, for ease of play, you can do this however you want at home, but for ease of play, I'm just going to put line two, line two, defensive pair two, defensive pair two in. You could keep uh, your players in, but there will be a rule on if a player, if a line is in too long, right? And what you can do is you could, how, if you're going to find out how long they were in, you can just look and see, oh, there's three, there's three, you see there's three cards there. Maybe you can't, but there's three cards there. So I can know if I get up to the four to five cards and the players have been in too long. 
So all I have to do is just scoop these and move them aside. And now the next group I can flip up, right? I can keep track of the next time. Although, like I said, what you could do is just say at every minute, new minute mark, we're going to put a new line in, which is fine. Again, this game isn't going to simulate every single pass, every single everything that happens in a hockey game because that would take you hours and hours to play. We are just trying to make it manageable in 20 second time increments for you to be able to play. All right. Will you be able to rate your own teams? No. If not, how quickly will teams be available when I get them done? I, I, I don't know. I'm still in the process of creating and finalizing and finishing. This is just an intro for you guys. So, uh, here we go. So it's six to two, but remember because of the plus one, Philadelphia wins by five and a three. Five and a three, no action. So another 20 seconds off the clock. We move on. Uh, five to three, that's plus three and a four. Boy, we're getting a lot of roll lows and that's gonna be no action again. So you can see we just went through almost a whole, whole nother minute. And it only took us like really 30 seconds to do that. And probably another result. So that is going to be a tie. But because of the plus one, uh, Philadelphia wins by one and a two. And that that whole shift, nothing happened. We went through three plays, nothing happened. That happens. I mean, you just... And now we're going to switch lines. We're going to go to three and three and three and three. Oh, come back here. Almost dropped the dice. All right, so this is a five to six, but because of the momentum, they get a plus one, so that's a tie. So we look on the tie, and we look at the 10. And that's gonna give us a check on the penalty home team to see if there's a penalty. So we're gonna look at who is gonna maybe get a penalty, right? It's gonna be the right defenseman. So it's gonna be Robert Haig, and we're gonna roll on his penalty check He's only a P1 right now, so just if we roll one, he will take a penalty. He does not take a penalty, so we move on. Another 20 seconds off the clock. We've got their third liners in there. Third liners, banging and banging. I am using team colored dice. <laughs> what do you think the red is for, bud? I don't... I, yeah, you can do it any way you want. That's fine. Uh, so that's going to be Pittsburgh wins by two and a three. 20 minutes, 20 seconds off the clock because nothing happens. Uh, that's going to be a plus three and an 11. Plus three and an 11 says play stop. Okay, so we're going to have play stop at the three minute mark. So again, because there's a start we're going to put our number one lines out again number one lines all right Pitts, uh, philadelphia wins by two two and a 15 now that's probably a good shot it's a shot c by the left defenseman ivan Provorov. he's a three so he needs a one two or three on the red dice and he got a 10, so it's a, uh, it's not a goal. Now the question is, is it a save? That was a 15. So if we look at uh, Matt Murray here, he is a one to 14 as well on the scene. That's a 15, so he didn't make the save, so it actually ends up going wide. So look at the wide result, and it tells us miss shot is gonna be off the post, out. Off the post and out. So we got a play stoppage. And there would be a, a face-off result, but right now we don't have those on these cards, these team sheets right now. So, uh, oh, that was another 20 seconds off the clock. Here we go. So two, uh, line ones are back out again. Ooh, wow. That's gonna be six to one. That's a plus five and a three though is gonna be no action. So nothing off the clock there. And now we end up with a tie because of the plus one. Tie in a seven says uh, visitor penalty. 
And it's going to be on the left wing. So that's going to be Jake Gensel. Let's see if the left wing is going to take a penalty. And he does not take a penalty. So now there is a, it's hard for you guys to see, but there is a ratings on our columns here, which go for hard play which makes uh, all penalty ratings go higher and higher and higher until eventually the penalty gets called. So in the beginning, most players are rated really, really low. And what happens is through time, build up, uh, getting the hard play results, right? You're going to get, uh, eventually it's going to build up until somebody gets a, a penalty check. The other problem is I don't actually have the updated penalty on these, these two teams here. I have to update these sheets, but I wasn't planning on doing like a, a complete game. So we're down to 16 minute mark. So we're gonna go back to line twos. And this is gonna be Philadelphia wins by one. One and a nine is no action. All right. You see we're starting to pick up the pace a little bit now. That is a plus four. Four and a 15 is gonna be a shot B. For whoever we want. So it's going to be Sean, um, Sean Couture. Sean Couture. Couldn't. He's taking a shot B. All right. So is it within his range? He is a seven. It's out of his range. Is this dice within the range of the goalie? It is. So Matt Murray makes the save. And a save in a 14 says over the shoulder into the glass. So no harm, no foul. You would mark off another shot on goal if you're keeping track of that information at home. Take another 20 seconds off the clock. Got to remember to do that. Uh, so that's a tie in an eight. That's going to be a home penalty on the left wing. That's going to be Andrew McDonald. And an 18 is out of his range, so no penalty. Another 20 seconds off the clock. And we're going to bring out the third liners again. Philadelphia wins by two. Two and a nine says no action. And it's going to be plus three because of the momentum. Plus three and a 16 is going to be a shot B for the left defenseman that's Brian Manning he is a two so he needs a one or two to get it on goal Ooh, just missed it and the goalie made the save and what kind of save was it he freezes it body save freezes puck so it's gonna be frozen another 20 seconds off the clock and with 1420 to come Instead of waiting till the 14 minute mark, we're just going to go ahead and say, you know what? The teams are going to make changes. They are going to uh, they're going to bring in the fourth liners. So fourth liners are going to come in, and the first uh, no, we'll go with um, we'll go with the second defensive pair. Second defensive pair, fourth liner. What I could have read hits the shoulder into the glass since the shot was on target and the goalie made the save. If it's over the shoulder, it's a wide shot. Yeah, there's a different there's a different shot for it's it's uh it's it's up to these dice to determine whether or not the goalie actually made the save or not. Whether it went on goal or not doesn't matter. This is this determines whether or not it's considered a shot on goal. And then um, there's a goalie same chart, and then there's a missed shot result. Now, the only difference between these are on your goalie save results, you're going to get sometimes it's going to go out of play. You're also going to get plays where the goalie's going to, um, there's going to be rebound opportunities. Uh, and the missed shot results, there's not as many of those as well. There could be deflections. So it depends on whether it was a goalie save or a missed shot. All right, so we're at uh, fourth liners, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, these dice just determine, is, is, did the goalie make the save or not? And if he made, if he did, if he made the save, was it a goal, right? Was it on goal? And did they make the save? So that's what these dice 
are going to tell you whether it's a shot on goal or not and then whether it was a goal all right so fourth liners and second defensive pairs here we go all right so it's going to be pittsburgh by one one and a 15 is going to be a shot c going to the centerman that's the fourth liner that is simon dominic he is a one so he's going to need a really good result here but trust me, Dave Garner got a really good result. On his first goal, Dave Garner got a 1 and a 20. <laughs> so it happens. Oh, and look at what he... Oh, no, went the wrong way. Oh, if that was a Pittsburgh. No, no. So goalie makes a save. So we count that as a save. Was it, on, was it a goal or not a goal? It was not a goal because it didn't come in. So goalie save two, uh, off shoulder and out. So, another almost in there goal. Uh, and fourth liners staying out. So, Simon Dominic almost put one in. Wow, that would have been huge. So, we got a face off. And it's going to be because of the momentum chip. It's going to be a plus one for Philadelphia. So, they win one in a six. That is going to be a no action. That's going to be a plus two for Philadelphia. Two and an 18 is going to be a shot B to anybody we want. Um, it's going to be Nolan Patrick. He's a four, actually, for a fourth liner. He's pretty good. Nolan Patrick, the fourth line man's in there. Nope. Shit. I, I dropped the dice. Don't you go under my desk. Ugh, hang on a second. It's uh, not on goal. The goalie would have made the save anyway. So it's credited with the save. And we look at the 17. The 17 says pad save in front. And then there's an amber sign. The amber sign means you do what I call a rebound test. So the rebound test is very simple, right? It's just like your matchup test. We're going to roll these dice to find out who gets the rebound. If the team that just took the shot gets the rebound, then they get a rebound shot. If the other team gets the rebound, now this is this is just straight up dice. You don't use the mod. This is this is not taken in consideration, right? This is a rebound test, which is different than a matchup test. So rebound test, and Pittsburgh got the rebound, so no rebound chance. And who got the rebound? That's what this dice tells us. Uh, it's going to be Justin Schultz got the rebound. So another 20 seconds off the clock. And now we're back to just normal play again. And look at that, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Uh, because of the plus one now, because we're doing a regular matchup, they win by one. One in this seven is no action. And so we're down to the 13-minute mark. So we're going to bring in the one uh, first liners again. So really, um, flowing now to Dave Garner. Thank you. Again, guys, if you're just joining us, Dave Garner and Turbocharged Sports both are in the chat right now, and they did a lot of work helping and with me, just giving me ideas, fine-tuning things, bringing up ideas, just trying to make me think about things. So a, pre a big shout-out to those guys for helping get this at least off the ground, which is, you know, I've been sitting on this for six years, so it's nice to get it off the ground. So, uh, so a big shout out to Turbo Charge Sports and Dave Gardner in the chat right now. So thanks to them. All right, so we are, yeah, you can see we're flying through this game, really. I mean, I'm doing a lot of talking. We're not actually, you know, I'm not just rolling, roll, 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 roll. We could have been done already, but this, this should go a little bit better. All right, so Philadelphia, four. Four and a 13. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. It's a shot. C goes to the right wing. Uh, it's going to be Jacob Voracek. So Jacob Voracek. He's a three. So one, two, and three. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Look at what we got here. So Jacob Voracek. One, two, or three. Right? One, two, and three. So the goalie needs to make the save. Matt Murray is a 14. 
He did not make the save. It was on goal. That is a goal at the... Now, what we do is we flip it over because we just did that play, right? So we're 1240, right, is the time. But you can also, if you want to get exactly, because there's 20 seconds, you can get the exact time of the goal by just rolling in 20 sider and adding it to whatever the time is there. So it's 723 of the first period. Jacob Voracek lights the lamp for the Flyers, and they go up one to nothing. And look at us go. We have us a score here in the first period. So Jacob Voracek just got on the ice and gets the goal for the Flyers. And they take a one to nothing lead on the Penguins. So 12.40 to go. We're going to leave the ones in. We'll just leave the ones in. All right, so we got a plus one. So Philadelphia wins by one. One and a nine is going to be no action. So flip up for the time. Uh, oh, this is a big win for Philadelphia and a big number. Wow. That's going to be a breakaway shot. So someone's got a breakaway shot. And that, unfortunately, is their defenseman. And that's going to be Ivan Provorov. He is a breakaway of four. He's not, you know, being a defenseman, he's not great at breakaways, but he's got a breakaway opportunity. Breakaway shot here coming up for, and he, goalie does not make the save, but he shoots it wide. So wide shot and a five is wide left of the post. So big opportunity for Philadelphia to go up 2 nothing, and he misses the shot. We go down there, so we're going to go to second lines across the board. Uh, so on a shot, the dice has to be under the shot rating of the player and over the goalie to be a goal. It has to be equal to or less than their rating to be a shot that the goalie needs to make to save. And for the goalie, he needs to have his number less than or equal to his rating to be a save. Correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we forgot to do assist. Lazy Warlock brought that up. Uh, good point. So the way you do assist, right, you simply uh, grab your two dice. You're going to roll the two dice to see. So it was uh, Jacob Ward. And the assist went to uh, the right defenseman and that would have been Shane Gotch's beard. And then, since you rolled a six, you take you look at who else was on the ice, and you look at their highest assist rating. So you got a 24, a 13, a 68, and so it's going to be the Claude Guru. So you're going to anytime you roll a six, you're going to use the highest uh, assist rating. And that was brought up by um, Turbocharged Sports, actually, who brought. Uh, thought about um wanted to know how that happened and so it made me think about the chances of getting a uh, assist and how what we do with the six what do we do with the six do we make it no assist or what and so he he pushed for six is goes to the highest assist rating so that's what we're doing um so it's uh jacob voracek from shane gotcha's beard and claude guru at, uh, oh, I should have wrote down that time. It was, um, damn, what time was that? I think it was 7.23 of the first period. It was uh, Voracek from Gottes Beard and Guru. All right, so there you go. So here's my official score sheet right there for it. Uh, whoever shot the puck should get an assist since the rebound was the scoring. I don't think, no, I don't think that was the rebound one. Was that, that, no, that wasn't a rebound one. That one, that one came off, that one came off the chart. The rebound one before that, I think they missed. Good point, Lazy Warlock. Thanks for bringing that up. All right, so you guys, uh, we're down to 12 minutes. 
So we got our second lines out there, I think what we said, right? So uh, because of the this, so momentum, if you're just joining us, you lose momentum if you take a penalty, your opponent gets mom momentum, your opponent scores, or the end of the period. So right now, uh, Philadelphia is on fire for the first eight minutes of the game, which makes sense. So at the home, usually, you know, we talked about it a little bit ago. You got that home field advantage, and they always talk about in hockey, the visiting team has to withstand that first 10-minute onslaught. So this has been a really good onslaught by Philadelphia. And now they got a plus four. No, plus three and a nine. Plus three and a nine is going to be... Uh, possible penalty on the left wing. So left wing, and that's going to be Jacob Voracek. And he does not have a penalty. So another time off the clock. And like I said, I, I don't have the updated penalty ratings on here because I switched how we do penalties. Again, this game is in progress. Don't expect everything to be written in stone right now. There's already, I already talked about it, there's already missing face-off ratings. We were, I'm working on getting the face-off ratings added to the system. Uh, oh, so, sure, sure. Uh, so here's the way... God, I keep, I keep bumping the thing. Um, so here's the way penalties work. It's very simple, right? So we talked about it. You would have your you would have your sheet. You would assign your lines, right? You'd figure out who's going to be on your power play, who's going to be on your penalty kill, blah, blah, blah. The penalty happens, right? And uh, the whistle's not blown until, obviously, if, uh, you know, the offensive team is taking a shot and a rebound and, you know, you finish up the play and then the whistle is called, Assuming that, uh, you know, the offensive team doesn't continue with the puck. Once once there's a play stoppage or the other team gets the puck, then you stop. Uh, and then, uh, so we're just simulating he, he took a penalty, right? Uh, and uh, I'll just, I, I kind of, I just kind of just... Uh, I kind of need to show you the, the new the new format. And I only have the 1978-79 teams done with it. But you can see um, they're rated with a regular penalty rating, and then they're rated with a misconduct pen or a, a major penalty as well. So um, you can see they're also a lot higher ratings. Like, see, uh, Nick F Fatua, Fatua, whatever his name is, Fatua, he's got a penalty rating of eight right off the bat. Uh, Bill Esposito is a penalty of three, uh, you know, and it goes it goes up from there. You know, Ron Gershauer is a penalty of four. Dave Maloney is a penalty of ten. Mario Maros is a penalty of six, you know, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the way it, I'll actually show you on this chart because it makes a little bit, because uh, like I said, I didn't update these charts. I probably should have played with the 78, 79 teams. Because they are pen, they are up to date. Uh, so when you roll, right? Uh, we'll say it was the left wing here, Dean Talfus, right? He has a rating of P2 and MJ20, which means on a 20-sided dice, if you roll a one or two, he's going to take a two-minute penalty, and if you roll a 20, he's going to take a major penalty. So if we look at Walt Tezak. He's got a major penalty of dash, which means during the season he did not take a single major penalty, so there's no chance of him having a major penalty. There are some players like Ron Grashauer. You can see he's got a penalty of four, and then he's got a little star. The star represents that that player sometime during the season took a misconduct penalty. So on the chart, there'll be a um, there'll be a result that say if the player has a star then he also gets a either a game misconduct or a 10 minute misconduct depending on what you roll on the chart so that's I mean that's pretty much as simple as that now as far, as far as gameplay mechanics go right anybody that anytime you have a matchup roll right and you're on the power play you're gonna have a different colored chip for the power play. 
And let's see. I'll get out a different colored chip here. So you're gonna have a you're gonna have a different colored chip for the power play. And the power play is just simply anybody that's on the power play gets a gets a chip. And and the basically the rule is anytime you have an extra player on the ice, you get a plus one to the matchup rule. So if I'm on the power play, I have five guys on the ice, you have four guys on the ice, so I get a plus one. If you take another penalty, I have a two-man advantage, then obviously I get a plus two to the dice. Now this this also comes into uh, power plays play a big a big component on the regular chart. Because you can see here, like if I roll a two and a nine, right, there's no action. Unless you're on the power play. If you're on the power play, then you get a shot on goal. Right? So sometimes the no action results, you can see over here all the way at plus five, right? If I can show you that. You can see all the way over at plus five, the only no actions are one and two. Everything else, if you're on the power play, you're going to get a shot on goal. Because you beat, you beat the team by five and you're on the power play, you should have a much better chance of getting a shot on goal. So, and now on the other end of the spectrum is if the penalty t uh, killing team gets, uh, instead of getting shots and goal, what they do is they ice the puck. Right here, you can see uh, uh, instead of getting a shot on goal like a normal guy, if you're on the penalty kill, you ice the puck instead. So you lose, obviously, if you're penalty killing, you lose a lot of your shots and goal, and the power play team gets a lot more um, opportunities to be on the power play. So basically... Anytime you you get a man advantage, you're going to get a little chip, right? For the for the two minutes, you you have the power play opportunity, and in this case, you know if if let's say for whatever reason Pittsburgh took a penalty, right? So Philadelphia would get the momentum chip, and they would have it. They're going to be a plus two, and if they got on a two man advantage, right? They would actually be plus three, and that's the most you can ever get is plus three because there's only one momentum token. And there's only two power play tokens. And you would have to get the power play tokens, um, you know, back-to-back, -back basically, plays. Because, um, you know, they, they only come in one at a time. Uh, and like I said, if, if, uh, if, if you have the momentum token and the other team earns momentum, right, then your momentum token just goes away. And then, let's say, Pittsburgh gets a power play. So they get the thing back, so they would be up to a plus one. So basically, it's very going to be very simple for you to calculate, right? Oh, I've got a token because they're on the power play. He's got a token because he's got momentum. Oh, okay, so it's just going to be a, you know, an even roll. It's just going to be an even roll. So that's, that's, pretty, much, that's pretty much how that goes. Um, you know, there would be times where there's no action going on. You know, you might roll two or three times like we did, you know, like, 14 or 15 minute mark rolled when we had the three line uh, third liners out well like three in a row where there are no action when that just happens I mean you just have times where nothing happens uh, but the, you know there's be other times that you get four five six shots on goal in a row um, which happens as well uh, so we have charts for you know the goalie save we got the missed shot angle. We have rebound check shots. Uh, we have minor penalties, major penalties, and then unusual play. Uh, we haven't really got into this much, but again, this is hard play, which means everyone's penalty chance is going up because they're they're doing things. You know, they're hooking, they're grabbing, they're slashing, they're hook, you know grabbing and blah blah blah. So this this is basically an, a mechanism to increase the power play for everyone across the board until far away there's a penalty called. Because sooner or later there will be a penalty called. It just depends. And it goes from one to four um, to give a uh, bonus to everyone's penalty ratings. And like I said, uh, it just, I don't have the updated penalty ratings on the 2018. I've been working on the 78, 79 because Dave and, and uh, Turbo have been forcing me to do the 78, 79 
Um, and so you can see I've updated all these guys with their updated penalty ratings. Uh, and uh, and they actually have face-off markers in there ready to go. I just don't have the face-off ratings on there. But uh, we'll probably get into that next time. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the flow. I mean, you're just, you're, I gotta, I'm trying to design it where you're just, you're getting a nice, you know, it shouldn't take too long for you to get, no matter where you're at in the game. Once you roll the dice, it shouldn't take you very long to figure out what happens, right? That's a plus two, right? And a 10. Plus two and a 10 is a possible penalty to the left defenseman for whoever uh, lose, lost the massive, right? You roll, you roll to see if they got a penalty. No, okay, move on. Go to the next play, boom. Next play is gonna be a tie and a 10, and there's gonna be a penalty on the home team. It's gonna be the right defenseman. Let's see if he gets a penalty. Let's use 1978, because, uh, so he's a penalty one to four and a major 19 to 20. So it's a six, so he didn't get a penalty. Now. Like I said, there's that hard play mechanic, and what I do with the hard play mechanic is I just take an extra 20-sided dice. Uh, does the team, yes, you lose the momentum if you take a penalty. So there's, there's four events that can happen to have you lose momentum. Your opponent scores, you take a penalty, your opponent gets momentum, or the period ends. So any one of those four events. So if you take a penalty, you lose a momentum chip. Uh, if uh, your opponent scores, you lose momentum. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you're scoring, if if your opponent scores, you're not you're not going to have momentum anymore. It just makes sense. There'll be uh, there'll be results on the. Uh, and when does when does the team earn momentum? Right. There'll be results on the chart that'll have the momentum built into it. And so you'll, oh, it's a, oh, that team earns momentum, right? So it's not like something you got to keep track of. It's just going to be on the chart and you're going to know and you're just going to give the team momentum and you're going to be re ready to roll, right? So I'm trying to keep this as fast paced as you can go because you got to go through 180 results, right? So 60 per period, you got to go through 180 and then if it's tied, you got overtime. So I'm trying to keep things where, okay, you know, once you roll the dice, you're to just find the two dice that you care about and look and see what happened. Oh, okay. It's a tie. A tie to nine. Possible penalty. Is it a penalty? No. Move on. And it's a plus three and a four. No action. Move on. So we just did those two plays in literally 10 seconds, right? So you're just flipping up the cards. Boom, boom. Plus two and a six, no action. So we just did three plays. Let's go to the next guy. That's a, t that's a t I will say right now nobody's got momentum. That's a tie and a 17. Now that's a hard play plus two. So now everyone's penalty has gone up by two. Everyone's penalty rating has gone up by two. So I, what I do is just, I'll probably have like a little, like a little, uh, like one of these things where you just keep track of that. So right now everyone's penalty is a plus two. So next, next penalty check. So that's a plus one and a four, no action, move on, boom. That is a tie and a nine, that is gonna be a penalty on the home team. The centerman, that's uh, Phil Esposito, and nope. All right, so no penalty, flip the card. Putting in the next line, line two. It's a plus one and a 15, now that's probably a shot. Yep, it's a shot C. To Don Durgray. So Don Durgray is going to get a shot. He's a two. So it didn't come within his range, and the goalie didn't make the save. So it was a missed shot. Missed shot of 17 says two deflections and ends up in the corner. So it goes off a stick, off a skate, and ends up going in the corner. So no goal. And we just take that and flip it up. You can see, I mean, we can get some plays done plus two and a 20. So anytime you roll a 20, 20s are going to be really good. You're going to get odd man rushes. You're going to get breakaways, right? So plus two is going to be an odd man rush, three on two. It's going to be a shot A. 
It's going to be a shot A, and you can see it gives you momentum. So whoever would have rolled this result gets momentum, and they get a shot on goal. So uh, this is um, Philadelphia 1 by 2. So it's going to be a 3 on 2. They would have gotten momentum back. Let's say they lost it earlier, and now they got it back. If they already have it, it didn't matter. And they got a centerman that's taking a shot A. So this is going to be a good shot. This is a... Uh, this is going to be, who is this? This is going to be Phil Esposito. No, I'm sorry, the second line draw there. Oof Nelson. Oof Nelson. He's coming in on a uh, two on one. I'm sorry, three on two. Oh, so here's how you do three on two, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to roll your three dice and find out who's on the rush. So it's the right wing, the left defenseman, and whoever you want. So we'll say the centerman. So the centerman, the right wing, and the left defenseman are on the rush because it's a three on two. If it's a two on one, you're just going to roll two dice. In this case, it's the right defenseman and whoever you want. So you just basically, anytime you're looking for players, you roll the six-sided dice and it tells you who the players are, right? So it's a three on two. And so you choose between those players that, that are on the rush to take the shot. It was the centerman, the right wing, and the left defenseman. We're going to take the centerman. That's Ulf Nilsson. He's a five, so he's got a good shot here. We're using the 1970-79 Rangers versus the 1917-2017-2018 or Pittsburgh Penguins right now. Ron Duguay. Okay. Uh, Usually the right-hander team score, uh, ices the puck, but somewhere in there, they can actually score shorthanded. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, again, uh, you can see there's a shot here. Ice, 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 ice. But they still have a shot on goal here. They have a shot on goal here. They have a shot on goal here. They have lots of shots on goal over here. So there's still lots of, lots of opportunities, just not as many opportunities. It's, it's Jonathan, or J Johan, it's, it's just, I mean, yes, it's just like hockey. Everything that can happen in regular hockey will pretty much happen in, in, in my game. It's, it'll be harder to s score on the power play, but it'll still be possible, right? So, oh, come here, Dice. Hoop Nelson is on the three on two. He gets the pass. And he takes the shot, and it's an eight. He misses it. Is the goalie make the save? The goalie did not make the save, so it was a missed shot. And we looked at the missed shot opportunity. It's a weak shot, flutters wide. So probably, you know, slid the pass over to him too hard, and he just couldn't get it on net. So then we just pick things up. And, of course, because they just got the breakaway, they get the momentum token. Another 20 seconds off the clock. And that's a even, and an even in three is off stick out of play. So just another minute off the clock. I mean, gone through more than uh, more than half a period. And yeah, so that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, you're just gonna be rolling the matchups. You're gonna check the results on the chart. Boom, boom. If it's a shot on goal, you're gonna get your three twenty signers. Right? If it falls within the goalie save range, it's going to be a save. And if he doesn't fall within his range, then you look at the shooter. Is it within his range to put it on goal? If he puts it, if it is within range, then he scores. If it isn't within range, then he missed the shot. And his shot goes wide. So that's where you look at the goalie save. Let's say... Um, the Rangers are taking a shot on the Penguins, right? So you look at the goalie, and since it's in his range, it's going to be a save. So was it was it within his range? It doesn't matter. It's still going to be a save. So you, it would be counted as a shot on goal, right? And a shot on goal and a save. And then you would look at the save under the eight, and it says blocker it in the corner. So there's no 
sometimes it'll be knocked out. It'll be knocked out of the play. Sometimes the play will continue. Sometimes it'll be a rebound opportunity. Sometimes it'll be a slight chance of a goal happening. Uh, and even though he makes a save, it might go off his glove and hit the post. Uh, so, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, oh, you have a uh, Rangers got on the power play plus one momentum. Uh, so I'm trying to read your question, Turbo. Plus one momentum for the Rangers on the first roll of the power play. There was a big hit by the Bruins to grab momentum. No. So, yeah. So if, if the Rangers had momentum, right, and you're playing against the, the dreaded Boston uh, Bruins, right? So you have the Rangers and the Bruins. The Bruins are on the power play. Uh, there's uh, on the first roll of the power play. There was a big hit by Bruins to grab momentum. I'm still. I'm trying to figure out what you had said. So I'm trying to remember uh, uh, the first roll of the power play. Oh, Rangers got on the. Oh, the Rangers are on the power play. All right. So the Rangers have the power play. All right. So the Rangers have power play. So no, 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 no. The, there's a difference between the momentum chip and a power play chip. So they're going to be different. Uh, so hang on, let me get let me get out some examples here. I can't grab the stupid dice. Why? Okay, here we go. All right, so we'll say this this is the momentum token, and these are the power play tokens. So if you are on the power play, the Rangers are on the power play, and, the, and you get momentum, then you get the momentum token, which would cancel out the bonuses, okay? Um, so if, oh, I'm sorry, if you're on the power play, there's only one momentum token. It's either on this, one team is on this team, or it's not on either team. You can have a one or two power play on a team at a time. So they're going to be different. It's not, you don't get momentum. And then if this guy gets, uh, this guy um, gets the momentum token, right? He just takes the momentum off of you, right? If you're on the power play and he gets momentum, then he's going to get the momentum token. Hopefully that'll... The momentum token lasts until one of four events happen. One, your opponent earns momentum. So if, if the Bruins have momentum and the Rangers earn momentum, then the momentum token goes away and nobody gets it. Two, if Boston takes a penalty, they lose momentum. Three, if the Rangers score a goal, they lose momentum. Or four, the end of the period happens. Everyone starts fresh at the next uh, the next period with no momentum. So anytime you get momentum, right, you're gonna get the momentum token. It might last the whole period. It might last one play. Who knows? It depends on what happens on the chart. Uh, Johan, you want to go check out the video I did this afternoon about having people that are interested join my discourse because that's where all the files are. If you join my discourse, you can get access to the Bruins, the Rangers, and the Canadians from 1978-79. You also have access to the 2017 Philadelphia Flyers and the 2017 Pittsburgh Penguins. 
and you also have access to the updated charts. So you can download everything and print it out. All you have to do is watch my video on how to join my Discord. If you're on my Discord, then you probably can go in and uh, um, download them right now if you're on my Discord channel. They're under the Matchup Hockey folder, so look for that. Uh, if you have the momentum and you get the power play, yes, that gives you a plus two. So momentum and power plays are different tokens. I don't, I don't have, I don't have a different token, so I, I can't, I can't. I guess I could do these. I could use these tokens, but I didn't figure they would stand up. So if you have uh, if you have momentum, and then you have power play. If you have momentum and you take a penalty, you lose momentum. That's or if you uh, have momentum and your opponent scores, you lose momentum. If the Canadians have momentum and then they get a power play, they have a power play and they have momentum. So that's, uh, that's just kind of the quick overview. I wanted to get this out. Uh, probably next time I'm just going to sit down. Um, we'll go over how face-offs work. Again, the penalty ratings, when you roll for a penalty check, all the players, especially 1978-79, have been rated with their power play, or I'm sorry, with their penalty and their major. So when you roll the dice, right, if you roll less than or equal to their penalty, then they take a two-minute penalty. And if you roll higher, uh, greater than or equal to their major penalty, then they take a major penalty. Like Terry O'Reilly here, he's a one to nine to take a two-minute penalty. He's a 10 or higher. So he's anytime you roll for Terry O'Reilly, he's going to end up in the box because... He took a lot of penalties. And if you roll 10 or higher, that's a major penalty. And then you would just roll on the major penalty chart to see what happened. And that's a 17. And the 17 says he got into a fight. And what you do with the fight is you look at all the players that were on the ice at the time of the fight. And you take the person with the lowest major rating. So if... Cam Connor, Pierre LaRoche, and Dan Newman were on the ice with Brian Eglum and Rick Chartraw. Eglum's a 17, Chartraw is a 20, Connor is an 18, LaRoche is a 0, and Newman is a My thing went dead. That's not cool at all. Chrome is not responding. Well, that's just not very nice. What did Chrome do? Whoa. Let me see if I can load Chrome up again and see if I'm still in the neighborhood here. See if I can restore the page here. Okay, yeah, I just came back. Okay, um, so one other thing about fights, right? So when a fight happens, right? After the fight is over, you're going to roll the dice for each team. And whoever rolls higher, so in this case, it was the Canadians 18 and the Bruins got an 8. So Montreal gets the momentum token. So a fight will actually give you momentum. The winner of the fight gives you momentum anytime there's a fight. Because, I mean, why else would they fight if it's not for momentum, right? So uh, if, if there's a fight and the Bruins uh, win, right, say they won, 
and Montreal had the momentum, then some of them, they just lose the momentum. So you don't automatically just get momentum. You you, it's it's like a seesaw, right? Okay, so either one team has it, and the other team doesn't. And then it goes back to neutral. Then it goes that way. So it's always one step up, one step down, neutral, back, uh, like that. It's not a up and down thing where somebody always has momentum. It's not going to happen, okay? It's a, you know, when nobody has momentum, everyone's equal. When one team has it and the other team doesn't, right, then if they lose momentum, then it goes back to evil again. So it's just even again. And then if the other team gets momentum, then they get it. And then if they lose momentum, it doesn't just pop over here. It just goes away. So it's a one up and down, stop in the middle. Always stop in the middle. You're never going to go from, if one team has momentum, it's never going to go to the other team. Never, ever going to happen. Never does that. Ever. Never does that. All it does is if you have momentum, it goes away. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's uh, that's that's what all I wanted to do was just show you guys a little bit, uh, play a little bit for you, just kind of give you an overview. If you're interested, I have the files online. You can join with us on my Discord channel, uh, and you can try it out, download it, print it out for free. Uh, give it a whirl. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Again, you have to go in, the, in with the mindset that this is going to be a game that, number one, all right, for me, my design philosophies are going to be, number one, is going to be playable, right, in an hour or less, hopefully, in an hour or less, and it's going to have good game flow. That's, it's going to have good game flow and be playable in an hour or less. There's a ton of things I could add to. I could add in the speed rating of players. I could add in their passing ability. I could add in their ability to, uh, you know, hit. I could, you know, add in their abilities to forecheck. I could add in all these stats. And all that's going to do is slow the game down. I'm not going to do that. I want a game that I'm going to have to go through 180 plays. I want to be able to do that with a simple dice roll and quick results. So if you want to come join the channel and you want to check this out, great. But the first thing I don't want to hear from you is why doesn't this player have these ratings? Why doesn't this do that? Because that's not this game. If you want that game, go find a different game because that's not going to be my game. All right. It's not going to be my game. My game is going to be quick to play, quick to look up, quick results. There shouldn't be, like I said earlier, there shouldn't be a time where I roll the dice and it takes me more than five seconds to figure out what happened. Right? I can look at this and go, that's a plus one and that's a six. A plus one and a six is no action. I pick up the dice and I'm rolling again. If you look at the dice and you don't know what's going on after like five seconds, then there's a problem with the game. I want it to be very quick and easy. Where you look at the dice and you can say, this team has a plus one over this team and they rolled a 10. And plus one and a 10 says no action. You flip up 20 seconds of time and you pick up the dice and you roll it again. If it's, if it's a shot on goal, right, then I want to be able to pick up the dice I want to roll the dice, and within three seconds, I want to know if it's a goal, or if it's a save, or if it's a missed shot. I can look at this and say, oh, that's a save, and that is a shot on goal and a save. That's a shot on goal and a save, and the result is it went off the stick and out of play. And I know that, and I can put my new lines in, and I can move these dice aside, and I can come up and I can say, boom. It is plus two and a 17. Now that's going to be a shot on goal, and that's going to be a C, and it's going to go to the right wing. And that's Guy Lafleur. He's a three. Guy Lafleur 
And he did not get it on net, but it was a save. So we're going to mark that down as a save. And what kind of save was it? It was off the post and out. Okay. I'm going to keep the same lines out there. And see, this is this is what I want. If this is not what you're looking for in this ho a hockey game, then you don't need to join our group because that's not what's going to happen. It's not going to be. It's going to be a fast, free-playing game. If you want something that's statistically accurate, down to the nitty-gritty, probably not going to be my game. If you want defensive ratings, you want skater ratings, you want. Uh, uh, Checking ratings, you want all that stuff, it's not going to be in my game. Because I'm not going to be adding in all that extra complexity into the game because it'll slow it down. I need you to be able to roll a play and get a result in 20 seconds. You have to be moving on to the next play in 20 seconds or you're taking too long to play. Because I don't want you to spend two or three hours playing this game. I want to be able to play it quick enough that you can look at things and say, and get your play results and be done in 15 to 20 seconds and just keep a nice flow going where you can flip up the cards, go to the next time, go to the next play. You can bring in your lines, which is going to slow things down. You're going to need to you know, manage this, so I'm going to have to make things quick. Like I said, there's going to be some plays where you're going to say, that's a four, that's out of no action, flip the thing, Go to the next one. Boom. That's an 18. That's going to be a shot on goal. That's a plus one. It went to the right defenseman. The right defenseman is uh, Serge Savard. He's a C. He needs a one. He got the one. Is it a save? It's a save. Oh, good save there. What kind of save was it? It was a save. Bounces out in front. We have a rebound check. I need to do a rebound check. So this is... The third dice roll I made on this one play, right? And if I get a rebound, then I'll be rolling a fourth time, right? So there'll be plays where you have to roll two, three, four times to get one 20-second time frame done, right? So that means I have to also make other 20-second time, time frames very quick to make up for the time when I'm rolling all these extra dice. Oh, it's a rebound, so it's going to be a rebound check. Rebound went to uh, the, um, let's see, I got to roll on the rebound check chart. No, it was a rebound, it was a, right, it was a missed shot, and it uh, was a save, and then, so Philadelphia, or uh, Montreal, gets the rebound and went to the right defenseman, that's uh, Serge Savard's going to get another shot at this. So he put it on goal, now let's see if he can do it again. And he rolled a nine this time, so it didn't, it's not a score. Was it a save? It was a save, so we were going to mark down a save. And the result is going to be off the stick, out of play. All right, moving on. Line twos are in. Boom, here we go. All right, and I'm just ticking, ticking time off every time I roll, right? Okay, that's a shot on goal by the center. That's Gene Rattel. I need a shot on goal by Gene Rattel. Boom. And Gene Rattel is a 4. He's a 12. So no. Is it a save? Ken Dryden does make the save on a 15. And what kind of save was it? It was a puck in the crease. Once again, it could be a rebound. We have to roll rebound check. And in this case, Montreal got the rebound, so Ken Dryden is saved, and no more opportunities there. 20 seconds off the clock. Boom, boom, boom. We're moving on. That is going to be a huge win for the Bruins, plus 5 and an 11. Mm, that's going to be a shot C to whoever I want. And that's going to be Terry O'Reilly. He's going to take this shot C. He's a 3. It's a 10, so he didn't get it on goal. Ken Dryden made the save, and it's a 20. So because it's a 20, he's got a special off the glove, and it's going to hit the post. Now I have to roll to see, does it go in or not? He's the home goalie. So on a 1, it'll go in. Otherwise, oh, if it would have been the visitor goalie, that actually would have been a goal. But Ken Dryden makes a save and holds on to it, as that does not go in. So I want it to be fast and quick. Without a lot of complexity, without a lot of 
a lot of um, chart lookup. Obviously, you're going to have to look up your play result on these charts. But, like I said, it's designed to be, again, it's designed to be quick. Because if you roll low, nine, you know, one, twos, and threes are pretty much no action. Four, fives, and sixes are going to be no action unless you are on the power play. Seven, eight, nines, you, you know, it depends on if you won by three or won by four. So sooner or later, you'll learn some of these numbers, and you'll, you'll be able to pick it up and go, okay, well, that's a 10, right? And 10, I'm going to have to look up. But if you roll one, a two, a three, or a four, it's pretty much no action unless you win by five. So you can, you know, simply pick up the dice. You can look at them and you say, oh, that's a four. So let's see, he only won by two. So a two and a four is going to be no action. Boom, no action. Okay, flip the dice. 14. Now that's probably going to be a shot on goal because it's high. And it is going to be a shot on goal. That is going to be a plus three. And he got a 14. Three and a 14. And three and a 14 is a C to the right defenseman. And he's only a one, Dennis O'Brien. He's not very good. And nope, he missed the shot. Was it a save? Yes, it was. Ken Dryden makes another save. We can move these dice aside, pick these dice up, put our number one lines out again, moving on. So that's that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. That's how the game is going to be designed. It's not going to be designed to be super in-depth. It's not going to be inside. It's not going to be designed to be... Um, uh, you know, it's designed to be as, as simple as it can be that it gets the player to get into the game and understand the what's happening in the actual game. Like I said in the beginning, if you're just joining us, I could roll two nights and say, well, Boston won 3-1 to one over Montreal today. Thanks for joining me, guys. That's it. Boom. Right? And the game's over. Right? Or I can also have huge spreadsheets that has ever, every player's rating based upon statistical accuracy. And we could be rolling every time a player makes a pass to see who it goes to. And it could take you 12 hours to play the game. And you get a result that is statistically accurate with every single pass, completion, uh, wh who it hit, who made every hit. Uh, where the puck was located at every moment of the time you can go back and check this out and it would take you 12 hours to play it that's not my game either right my game is going to be quick and simple as simple as i can make it that you can play it in an hour and also feel what's going on in the hockey game and there's a moments when it happened the goals that happened we had a goal right we had a goal earlier and everyone remembers what happened because it, you know, it, it was it wasn't just a oh let's see, uh well, let's see three six uh, three six means uh, at the seven minute mark uh, line one centerman scores goal right we could you could have a game like that too there's nothing wrong with that my game is going to be like you're going to feel the flow of what's going on what's happening oh okay we got a penalty coming up okay so that's a penalty right. So Boston's on the power play. Let's see what happens. Uh, oh, wow. They got Montreal has a shorthanded opportunity. And let's see if he can get this shot. And it's a goal by Montreal. Unbelievable, right? Things like that. It's going to be involved. You're going to be in the game. You're going to be actually playing the game. But it's not going to hopefully drag you down. All right, that's it, guys. I appreciate you showing up, and I appreciate Turbo Charge Sports, Dave Garner, for helping me out with uh, getting this to the point where we can actually introduce it to people. If you want to be part of this, if it's something that seems interesting, join our, my Discord. All the files for the teams are there. The charts are there. We'd love to have your input, your thoughts, your impressions, any kind of, uh, again, this has gone through 10 changes in the last two weeks. So if you're going to join up, all right, expect changes. Nothing's written in stone right now, right? And I keep, I, every day I send out a new chart. So if you're a person that's like, no, I don't want to be messing with something that keeps changing every couple of days, 
then you know maybe you're not interested in, in joining that's fine I you know we're looking for people that are interested to try this out get on the ground floor give us some work roll some games find out how it plays if we're missing something if something could be added uh, you know is there a way you know originally you know we had we had one chart with some D6 charts and we decided that wasn't good. We needed bigger, we needed like 1D20 charts. Dave Gardner said, you know, you can't have, you got to have bigger charts. And so we, we made things, we made changes to them. We, we're, we're constantly evolving, we're constantly adjusting things based upon feedback. If players say, oh, well, you know, you know, it, instead of a, a D6, right, could you make it a D20? And I said, yeah, let's do it, right? Uh, how, and, th and then they said, well, what about how do you do assists? And so I said, we well, roll the dice and, and whatever numbers come up, right? That's who gave you the assist. And if a six comes up, then no one got the assist, right? And then we had a problem with that. And people were like, wait a minute now, here's the issue. And we talked about it and we decided, you know what? Instead of a six being nobody, we're going to make that the person with the highest assist rating because it makes more sense that the person with the higher assist rating would get more ch opportunities. And so we made the change. So we're constantly changing things. We're constantly updating things. Again, I've got, I got face-offs. We're going to be adding face-offs to the game. We're going to be adding in, um, we just added the, the new, uh, uh, momentum token, uh, into the game so i mean it's constantly evolving and changing and it you know it's it's uh it's not it's not set in stone right now so it's it's uh it's been a fun adventure and we've gotten a lot of good feedback and and it's and i think things are going really good right now we just need to you know get a few more things done and then i think it's uh it's going to be real playable for everyone that uh that plays so so I just wanted to introduce it to everyone out there and, and give it a whirl and let you guys see it. Again, if you haven't watched my video earlier today, I did a video on how to join and how to join in my uh, how to join in my Discord group. And you can get these files, you can download them and try them out for yourself. Again, it's not gonna be a super in-depth game where each player is going to get 20 different ratings and you know defensive checks and and offensive checks and and all that stuff it's all going to be done to be as quick and playable as it can be that makes it fun for the player that's that's it so anyways thanks to dave and 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 paul for your help i appreciate it and thanks to everyone for coming by and next time we'll actually uh we'll introduce a few more things we'll talk about the face-off ratings when we get those uh and uh we might even get some colored charts for you guys next time as we're working on adding colored uh team charts which is super cool so we'll uh, we'll see everyone then so um all right that's it thanks guys see you later